Folks, welcome back to In Theory. In Theory, these are supposed to have better odds. In Theory, sleeved collector boxes or packs of Throne of Eldraine, the very first collector set. In Theory, people say retail versions of products, Wizard slightly increases the success or happiness rate to get people addicted and buying in retail locations to get them into the hobby. In other words, if somebody buys one pack in Walmart and they get a really good pool, the odds of them getting excited and going back are a lot higher versus if an individual buys a whole sealed booster box, they're probably already entrenched into the game. That's the concept. Whether it's true or not has been an age-old argument similar to pre-release kits. So today... We're going to crack, uh, we're going to go back. It's been a long time, folks. We're going to actually go back to some Throne of the Drano, the very first collector series. And um, we're going to crack 24 packs of old Steve's collectibles, my patron Steve over here. And uh, fun fact, yeah, fun fact. Uh, those are the anniversary kits. Fun fact, um, the only reason I have some of these left over is because I couldn't sell them to patrons. Yep, tried to sell these a couple years ago, and 12-pack uh, collector, little 12-pack pseudo-collector boxes for $169, I couldn't sell them. So I got stuck with a lot of these things. Yeah. So, we're going to grab, in theory also, you should grab an order, because when the factory kind of packs and does these things automated, they should be kind of, the track printing should be in order as, as these things are placed. So it shouldn't technically be randomized, they should come off the factory and be placed in a certain order. So we're going to grab 24 packs. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And then, of course, 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'll grab these four. And, of course, the 20. All right, so let's go over to the table. Let's see what happens, shall we, folks? All right. There's our four. And there's our 20. So we got 24 packs. So essentially two collector boxes. So let's do the four, six, eight, ten. Oh, jeez. All right, let's put a nice stack of these things. We'll do 12 and 12. So, obviously, the market has shifted dramatically. Throneville Drain is like this legendary, iconic set now. And, um, yeah, it's kind of many people... God, look, these things are so slippery. It's ridiculous. Oh, my goodness. They're very expensive. The packs have gone up substantially. And uh, there's not many of these even sleeved ones left on the market. So, first thing here, we're going to kind of just kind of prep a lot of these things, kind of rip them all to pieces, get all the packs lined up. I kind of yip yap with you guys as I do this. Um, overall, remember, this was a time when Throne of Eldraine collector boxes, they came out, people went crazy. I loved them. Everybody, it, the, the positivity and the energy was pretty high, okay? Prices went really high, like $300, $350 a collector box at release. Eventually came down to about, I'd say probably average about two, two fifty. dollars um, Of course, these uh, blister packs here were for retail stores. The amount of theft and fraud in Walmart and Target was so high, Wizards recalled them and did not distribute any of these leftover bundles, or bundles, these collector blister things, to the big box stores because people were essentially going to self-checkout and uh, scanning a $4 pack and then just doing times so many, and they were putting collector packs underneath. So they were essentially just getting these things for fire sale prices, and uh, stores and Wizards lost their ass. That's kind of what happened. So fast forward years later, collector boxes are like a staple of every Magic release. It's a big deal. Um, a lot of these things get pretty expensive. And of course, this is on the verge coming up here of Commander Legends 2 collector boxes, which people are all wound up about because obviously Commander Legends 1 collector boxes are incredibly, incredibly rare and expensive. So I don't think Commander Legends 2 collector boxes are going to perform as good as Commander Legends 1. But at the same time, this attitude of it's a dumpster fire, it's garbage going to zero and don't touch it, I think is the wrong choice. I expect the print run of the um, collector boxes for Commander Legends 2 to be higher, because obviously Wizards learn from the first time. But I also expect, no matter what people say, the market demand, the market is going to perform. I do not, I, I would not, you know, I mean, and remember, I mean, even when this thing came out, even when this came out, people were negative and all, oh, it's all the bad, this and that. And now, I mean, these things are expensive. They're tough to get. They're tough to find. And it's, it's you know, and I told everybody from the beginning, War of the Spark, Throne of Drain, the Guild, these things are going to be very sought after into the future, man. These things are not going to be like going to zero type attitude. And all 
fucking garbage all the way. Okay, we ready here? Anyways, let's jump on into this. Thanks again, Steve, for being a very kind patron. Um, as of right now, the filming of this is, uh, oh, brightness, hold on a second, folks. As of the filming of this, I mean, you know, these things are still, they bounce around three to $400 per 12-pack box. They're not cheap, man. And, um, by the way, and also, not just, you can't really, you can skip the commons, but just be aware, there's, uh, there's some black uncommons and a blue uncommon that actually have some good value. We got common common. All right, I'm trying to remember, God, I can't remember some of this stuff. That's the ancillary slot, I think. Man, it's been a long time. Lord of Gambreg, and look at that, pack one, foil mythic magic mirror. You know what's kind of crazy, because I think the most expensive card in Throne right now is actually not Oko, or like Ember Cleaver. I actually think it's um the green card, the henge card, the the big portal looking thing from Stargate. Yeah, that's, uh, that's how much things have changed, you know? All right, over here we've got the old Carver, Swordmaster, and the old Mother. We've got the old Mammoth there hiding in the middle. we got the Pyro, good old Cass and Garibay, and a lot of these... If you go on even TCG Player or Dawn Glare, it's amazing. Like a lot, even the basic, not basic lands, these specialty lands, and a lot of these cards have aged quite well. They've held up very good. It's been kind of impressive, seriously. All right, what else we got here? Anything in the common? No, nothing in the common uncommon still. Oh well. And over here, Windscar. Oh, the troll card. The troll card, man. Castle Garen Break again. These rare lands. And again, the land cycle, everybody always liked the land cycle. Everybody always thought the land cycle and this was creative and fun. I, I remember talking about that a long time ago in 2019, 2020. Was this 2019? Yeah, beginning of 2019. I remember it's something like, it's, God, the years kind of start to blur together when you're an old fart like me. Hey, boom, giant there. Nice rare in the old fairy tale uh, border. The witch, got the old dwarf man, and the old spyglass. That's not a very good pack at all. That was a dumpster fire. So I, I still, I've told everyone, I had hot takes on this set many, many times over the years where I said this was going to be like Lauren um, Morning Tide 2.0. Hey, mystical dispute. Um, this is like a $10 foil uncommon. I know. This is, some of these things have actually aged quite well. I know, crazy, isn't it? I remember people were talking to me about that. Hey, our full provocative. Okay, that's something we haven't talked about. And I've been getting people ask me um, to cover the Throne of Eldraine Brawl decks. Have you seen the prices of the Brawl decks? So Mythic number two. Hey, another castle there and Mirror Maid. That's, I've been, I've been meaning to do a video on the Throne Brawl decks. Because the prices, oh my god, have they gone up in value. So yeah, kind of a, a funny little thing there. Oh, Order of Midnight. Love that. Have that in the play map. And, uh, oh, another Order of Midnight. Beautiful piece of art there. Oko's Hospitality. Got stolen by the old Fae. Another castle. A nice little rare land cycle. These, I think most of these extended border ones or box topper ones or whatever it was, I'm pretty sure a lot of those, especially in foil, aren't they 10 $20 a card? And again, just make fun of him or wrong. I'm just making up numbers. Could be wrong. Turn into the old pumpkin there. We got uh, nothing there in the middle. Ah, troll card. Hey, Hushbringer. And Serpent. Not a good pack. So far, folks, uh, we're not doing that great. To be honest with you, Steve, we're not, this is, we're not getting, we got a couple good mythics up there. Or at least we got the, the old uh, fairy provocateur, but a couple good little cards, but nothing too extreme here. We don't have any crazy pulls so far. All right, the Fink. We got the old Piper. Oh, there we go. Emery in the foil box topper. She's still, dude, this has got to be a $20, $30 card still. Foil box topper, it has to be, man. Has to be. So, yeah, it brings back memories. Man, when we first started, this was the first collector box series we ever opened. And man, was it a wild ride. It was a ton of fun, everybody. Everybody was wound up with it. It was a wild time. All uh, right, we got Faberow. Hey, Faye of Wishes, nice little fool right there. So, so far, not not the greatest. We're not really getting that lucky. We may be heading to pay and press an F to pay respect for the patron. We're so far not, not terrible, but not that great at all. We're just missing some of the key cards, man. Hey, we got the old Rowan over here. I think it's uh, five mana Rowan. I think, is this the cheaper dual deck one or something? Hey, Master of Pranks, another very nice mythic, and then a creepy little charming prince. He always creeped me out. So yeah, not not really. T and remember, it's kind of weird because this was the time too. Getting the extended art box topper was a big deal still. Like those had huge premiums. Hey, Murderous Rider, very cool, very very well used card, Ugh, troll common card, Castle Garenbrig, and Bone Crusher Giant saw a ton of play also. Good times, man. Good times, folks. All right, last pack, and then we're halfway there. Uh, so far, kind of, kind of a meh. We haven't, 
We got some good stuff, but hoping for some good stuff. Oh, okay. Another Hero of Ash. Another one of these, uh, I think these are Throne of Eldraine uh, Brawl deck cards. And Harmonist for another Mythic. Okay, so we're getting some action here in any other contender. So we ended at six Mythics. I guess it's about right. I'm trying to remember what these original things were. Because remember, this was this was before, like, Theros Beyond Death collectors that had a million Mythics. Remember that time? It was completely insane. And then the three in the middle, you get the Ancillary. Lord, Escape into Wild. Not worth a whole lot there. So, so far, Steve, eh, I'm calling it okay. Oh, I love that art, man. So beautiful. So, I'm hoping we can get, like, an Oko or a Great Henge or something really wild, man. That would be really nice to see. Tree Folk Keeper, Banish Ancillary, Steadfast Star Wars Queen. Oh! Fabled Passage! Foil Extend. Now, that's a nice hit. Didn't this thing get reprinted, like, jump, like two, three times in M21 or Jumpstart or Mystery Slot or something? That's, God, Fabled Passage, man. Nothing says Throne of Eldraine like Fabled Passage. Godly. Isn't that crazy? Acting like... It's so weird to act like this is like an old out-of-print set now. It's so weird to think this. Another 5-drop Rowan. Not the greatest. Put this in the bottom there. We'll start technically through our next batch of 12 packs. Piper. And another Harmonist Archon. This time a foil. Ah. Not the Mythics we want to see, everybody. Not the Mythics we want to see. Ah, oh, man. I was hoping to see a great Henge or an Oko, man. Brings back the memories. Eh, Rudy the Turtle. Elder. Ah, the Serpent. Not a bad card, but not, not worth a whole lot there. So, anyways, yeah, these, uh... I know it's a hot take, but I still think Throne of Eldraine has a lot of room to run. The Collectors and the Draft Boxes, both of them. I still think this is a very cheap product for what it is, man. Another Fabled Passage and a Folio for a Box Topper one. Alright, two Fableds and a Folio. Eh. God, are we really going to have zero Okos and zero Great Henges in, in 24 packs? That sucks. Revenge of Ravens. Is this really on? I think there's a couple uncommons that are still worth a lot, too. I'm, I'm probably missing one. Alright, ah, Winds Guard, Troll Card. Gargoyle, ah, Stroke. Brutal, man. Terrible pulls. Come on. Terrible couple packs, everybody. All right, here we go. Midnight. We got Unicorn Queen. Fairy Formation. At least it's not a common card. Sundering Stroke. Ah! There we go, baby. Foil Mythic Great Henge. Holy smokes. This thing is still... Dude, I'm going to throw it out there. 50 to 100 bucks. Foil Mythic Great Henge. Okay. Best hit of the video, Steve. Okay. I was like, please give us one... <laughs> please give us one good hit. Oh, man, that sucks when we don't get anything for a while. Hey, Fake Hearse King, is that the one we've got? Oh, wow, so we've gotten three of the Brawl Deck Mythics? Once upon a time. Oof. Boy. Pepperidge Farm remembers that. Paragon. Got so many iconic cards in it, too. Once upon a time. The, oh, the, the turmoil on that card when it came out. Jeez Louise. People were so wound up about that thing. All right, Acolytes, Murr, Folk, and Squad. Another, th a third Rowan. Oh, the tr I liked this card. You know, make fun of me all you want, folks, but, dude, big, beefy, green dudes like this, six drop, seven, six, in the hole with three food tokens, sack three food tokens, bring it I, I like the Troll King, man. And, of course, Dance of the Old Mance. Dance in the Pants, baby. There's, I liked that card, man. That was so much fun. I remember this stuff. I enjoyed playing some of that online, assuming I actually played. All right, here we go. Bone Crusher Giant. Murderous Rider. Very nice bonus two rares in this pack. All right, Okos. Whispering. Ha <laughs> ha Love Struck Beast. Again, I think this is a great card, man. I really do. Man, dropping the 1-1 one, one, and then dropping the 5-5. Five, five I, I still think that's a great card. That's a showcase frame. That's also foil. I That thing saw so much play. Such a fun card, man. All right, here we go. Another Love Struck Rooney. Into the close here. Another Mammoth. Ah! Wizard. Last pack of it, folks. Last pack of the video. This is it, folks. You ready? Embrith. Cauldrons. Knight. Chittering Witch. Come on, baby. Ah, stolen by Faye. Alright, so obviously, best pool of the video is going to be a foil mythic Great Henge. The only thing that would have been better than that would be the extended art foil version, but still. Foil mythic Great Henge is a phenomenal pool, Steve. And, and honestly, I'm pretty certain... I, I gotta price check these, but I think these actual Brawl Deck um, kind of leader cards in the front of the Brawl Decks, I remember those. 
I think some of those are 20, 30 bucks a card. I swear some of those are really expensive now. So, anyways, in conclusion, I know it's hot takes. I know no one's watching this place, just a box opening, but I want to give everybody a couple opinions real quick. And I know people are going to think it's crazy. All right, Lorwyn and Morning Tide. Throne of Eldraine to me fits the Lorwyn Morning Tide fairy tale theme, obviously. Duh. Once upon a time, all this stuff, da da da. Lorwyn and Morning Tide are all like $1,000 plus boxes, period. You maybe can get them on sale eight nine hundred sometimes or you know whatever. Um, I think Throne of Eldraine, even the draft boxes today. I remember so. Do I you see the reason I say this is because Throne of Eldraine, just like War of the Spark, was one of the standard boxes that I when I was selling to patrons in twenty nineteen range. I couldn't even keep it in stock. Like I couldn't even offer it to the patrons permanently, like I do in today's Crimson Midnight Hunt Trash Fire. Right. That's how I know, like, I can gauge a lot of this stuff when thousands of patrons are all just endlessly buying Throne. Like, the first of the month rolls around, everybody buys extra cases of Throne. Another month goes by, they don't even care about the next set, they just buy more Throne. I can get a good, solid gauge of people's attitude. And let me tell you something, Throne of Eldraine was red, I mean, it was pure fire from day one. I ran out of it two, three, four times during the nine months I even offered it to the patrons. There were multiple periods where I had to pull it down for a week, for two weeks. Couldn't get the product. I couldn't get another pallet. I mean, I was just ordering 600 box pallets nonstop. And I couldn't. I would run out still. It was just daily. I had truckloads moving of Throne. It was, um, War of the Spark was the same way. No joke. And, of course, then it went out of print. I had to cut it down. Of course, people, patrons get mad. I didn't have a chance. And, you know, same old stuff. But it was just, and I look at this product today. And again, this was seventy nine ninety nine when I was selling the, the Throne draft boxes. I know seventy nine bucks. Those bring back memories. Or I'm sorry, eighty one if you you know two percent cash back and the patron fee. So patrons were getting it for like eighty one out the door. And um, I look back at this, and um, in those eighty one dollar boxes today, what's Throne? One twenty, one thirty, one forty. Maybe shipping and add taxes. Maybe one forty. Let's just say one thirty. Let's say in the middle. It's literally been like eighteen months. Okay, okay, 24 months, let's just say, round it up. Let's say it's been two years. And these things doubled. I mean, well, not doubled. I guess 80 to like 130 is like, it's like 80% return. It's, it's been phenomenal. It's been phenomenal. And I look at this product, and I do this little opening today. And I look at these cards, and the fairy tale things, the love struck beasts, these brawl commanders in here, the great henge, and once upon a time, all this crazy emeries and okos. And they're still, I'm telling you, done this shit long enough folks to tell you there are still certain sets that there is just straight up something special about it and i'm telling you guys right now this is one of those sets that is very special i said it when it came out a couple years ago i said it when it went out of print and i'm gonna say it again and i don't even have any for sale i'm not selling any of this stuff i did keep a position for myself especially the draft boxes and everything but I, i'm gonna say it again you know, I'm not even trying to sell anything. I just want you to know, this is a special product. It feels special. It's iconic. And just like War of the Spark and certain sets in Magic's history, you know it's good. And I firmly believe, and this is my hot take before I end the video at the end, I believe Throne of Eldraine draft boxes are $500 boxes. And I'm going to say it right now, I think Throne of Eldraine collector boxes could easily be a $1,000 collector box. And I know, it's stupid, this and that, because the Throne Collectors are, what, three, 400 And the Draft Boxes are, what, 130s, 140s, maybe 150 if you have high taxes. But it's just, give it time. The, the, people are going to look back on this in 5, 10 years, and they're going to remember how special, and they're going to treat this set as a special product the same way that we treat Morning Tide and Lorwyn right now from 10, 15 years ago. And I have no reason to think it's going to be any different. If Lorwyn and Morning Tide, and I know, lower print runs, but the feel of those products and the quality of that, I think Throne of Eldraine is on the same level, if not a tick higher. And yeah, the supply is higher, which is why I said draft boxes at 500. I didn't say draft boxes 1,000 or 1,500. I, I don't know about that, but I do believe $500 Throne draft boxes is a very real thing moving into the future. Because I just, I, I just, it's just an instinct thing. Done it my whole life. This is my life. My whole life is around cardboard, and that's how I feel about it. Hope you guys learned something. Hope you enjoyed Memory Lane. Thanks again, Steve, for your patience. Everything you see in this video is heading your way, man. Thanks again, everybody, for allowing me the honor and privilege to entertain. Have a beautiful day, everybody.